The Intercept published some DMs that WikiLeaks had with some of their top supporters. Um, I believe these DMs date back to about 2015. Now, some of the stuff in the DMs I think is personal, and I see no value in discussing it, so we're not going to discuss it. Um, other stuff, I would say it's just out-of-context smears. Um, and so, for example, they accuse Assange of being sexist and anti-Semitic. I think the evidence that's presented on that front is so weak and feeble and wrong that we're not even going to bother to bring it up. So I don't buy that at all. But we're going to put that aside and discuss a different part of the DMs here. And, um, this I think is interesting. I think it's noteworthy. I think it's newsworthy. And I think it merits a, a broader discussion. Now, before I continue, let me just say... Julian Assange is arguing in response to this. Well, no, you're just wrong from your premise because the, the article in The Intercept assumes it's Julian Assange running the WikiLeaks account and responding to people through the DMs in the WikiLeaks account this entire time. He goes, actually, no, it's been well-known public knowledge for a while that we have rotating um, people who end up running the, the WikiLeaks account on Twitter. So it wasn't me for these instances, and, you know, therefore don't... I don't know why you're using this to try to smear me. It's not true of me, okay? So I just want to give you his side of the story, and now let's jump into it, and I'll give you what they said and what's causing a stir and what my take on it is. So, in 20, back in 2015, the WikiLeaks account said in DMs to uh, some of their friends and top supporters, we believe it would be much better... For the GOP to win. Dems plus media plus liberals would then form a block to rein in their worst qualities. With Hillary in charge, GOP will be pushing for her worst qualities. Dems and media and neoliberals will be mute. She's a bright, well-connected, sadistic sociopath. Uh, and then they continue here. GOP will generate a lot of opposition including through dumb moves. Hillary will do the same thing, but co-opt the liberal opposition and the GOP opposition. Hence, Hillary has greater freedom to start wars than the GOP and has the will to do so. So, as Glenn Greenwald points out, that, yes, mainstream media is going to spin this a little bit, and they're going to act like, that's it, Julian Assange is pro-Donald Trump. Now, Glenn says, well, no, because you have to look at the context of his entire argument. What he's saying is, hey, maybe in the long run, Donald Trump will be better for left-wing causes. That's Glenn, Green Glenn, Glenn Greenwald's interpretation of what Julian Assange allegedly is saying here, or what the WikiLeaks account is saying here. Um, and yeah, I mean, in context, that's the argument he's making. He's saying, hey, listen, if Trump wins... It actually would be better in the long run, but not because Julian Assange and or WikiLeaks supports right-wing causes, but more because they think it's, it's the backlash effect argument that he's going to be so bad that you're going to, there's going to be a wave of people on the left who are principled and right about issues overtaking the Democrats. And then that leads to a Democratic Party that's effectively what it should have been all along. Whereas he says if Hillary wins, you make it so that the louder voices on the Democratic side are the neoliberals, and the GOP will sit silently by while Hillary starts more wars. So actually, if you believe in left-wing causes, it would, make, it would be better in the long run if Trump won. So that's the argument he's making. Now, is that an argument that's true? Uh, well, I would argue it's half true and half untrue. So, what do I mean by that? Well, I don't, I don't like it when people discuss the 2016 election in a way to suggest that there was any win on the table. Because there wasn't. There was no win on the table at all. Again, the WikiLeaks account is arguing, well, it's better if uh, Donald Trump wins. Because that'll lead to a left-wing backlash, and then we'll get good Democrats finally elected. Well, no, you don't know that at all. You don't know that at all. It's a lose-lose. If Hillary wins, it's a lose because she's a corporatist, neoliberal warmonger. If Donald Trump wins, it's a lose because it turns out, ultimately, he's a, a corporatist, 
neoconservative warmonger. So that's a lose-lose. There's no spinning it like, oh, hey, maybe a positive and then... <laughs> no, if you're trying to spin either one as a positive, you're cherry-picking to the point of absurdity. Okay, so I just want to... I just want to dismiss this notion outright of any option being a win. If Hillary won, it was a loss. If Donald Trump won, it was a loss. And that's why so many people were frustrated. Now, to the idea that, oh, if Donald Trump wins, that'll lead to a left wing. Finally, the right people will take over the left. Well, again, that's half true, half untrue. So, Donald Trump, the theory is, oh, my God, these people would, will block Trump from everything he wants to do that's negative. Well, that didn't happen. So right now, Donald Trump is bombing eight different countries. Obama was bombing seven. Trump added Niger for good measure. So we were bombing seven countries under Obama, which was already horrific. Now we're bombing eight countries under Trump. Now we're permanently occupying Syria. So the Democrats did not give an opposition to that. They went right along with it. Uh, there was a 432% increase in drone strikes under Trump. There was a report from Air Wars that just came out that said, uh, that said Trump in one month, or excuse me, one year, killed more innocent civilians with drones than Obama did his entire time in office. And that's not because Obama was good on this issue, it's because Trump is that bad on this issue, because Obama killed 90% the wrong people. He just didn't do as many drone strikes as Donald Trump. So the Democrats did not at all rein in Donald Trump when it comes to drones, not even close. Donald Trump loosened the rules of engagement. In Niger specifically, and also Somalia. He goes, yeah, tired of this thing of, hey, maybe we kind of have to wait until it's defensive for us to do anything. Let's just f get rid of the rules of engagement. And you have a massive increase in uh, civilian casualties, like I described, even though it was already bad under Obama. Again, if the argument from WikiLeaks was, hey, the left is going to fight back and stop Trump from doing all these terrible things, well, look at what happened with the Paris Climate Agreement. Trump pulled out of it, and... Democrats are sitting around with their thumbs up their asses, screaming about fucking Stormy Daniels, a porn star, screaming about some memo bullshit. They're mad because Trump said shithole. You're underestimating the ineptitude and how terrible and weak the Democrats are if your theory is any Republican president, no matter how bad, will lead to a principled backlash from the Democratic Party. Now... Again, you're not going to get that principled backlash. You do see, on the grassroots, there's an attempt, okay, we have to try to fight back and have populist left people take over the party. I know because I co-founded one of those movements, Justice Democrats. Okay? It's energy on the left that's forcing people like Kirsten Gillibrand and Cory Booker to stop taking corporate PAC money. That's all good. That's all fine and dandy. But, the pushback is a hell of a lot slower than it should be. And the Democratic Party joining this left-wing movement and actually being principled is happening one one-hundredth as fast as it should in order to be an effectual opposition to Donald Trump. This Democratic Party is so weak in their opposition to Trump, it makes me fucking sick. It makes me sick how they sit around while he... He just destroyed our entire tax system... Uh, made it so the next crash is going to happen very soon. Added $1.4 trillion to the deficit to give 83% of the benefits of the tax bill to the top 1%. Raise taxes on everybody making $75,000 a year or less. And when the Democrats were asked, hey, are you going to run on this issue and say we're going to repeal and replace Trump's terrible tax bill that gives all the money to the rich? The Democratic response was, no. We're going to restore balance. So the notion that oh my god, Trump would be ineffectual and get nothing done, and fucking the Democrats would be able to stop him on everything he does. That didn't happen! That didn't happen! He's getting a lot of fucking shit done. Even if it's not mostly through uh, legislation, look at all of his fucking executive orders. His shitty executive orders. Three million people got kicked off of health insurance because of his executive orders. You know? Uh, for every one new regulation, you need to get rid of two now because of his dumbass executive orders. They're, they destroyed the few remaining regulations on Wall Street because of his executive orders. So it's not true to say, hey, Trump is going to lead to a backlash that's going to... No, it didn't. There is a backlash happening, 
but it hasn't taken root. And it's not the, the predominant movement on the left. Or, for example, you wouldn't have had that story that just came out about how you have uh, Democratic officials tell candidates who want to run, the first thing they say is, could you go through your phone and raise like a quarter of a million dollars right now? And then if the person says no, they go, we're not interested in you. So you're going to tell me that this Democratic Party that has that philosophy is going to be in a, a sufficient opposition to Trump. They're not. They go along with him the majority of the time. So they're just not. So that theory is wrong. The only narrow way in which it's right is that among the grassroots, you're seeing that kind of a reaction, but the grassroots is still being held down by the corporatists, okay? Uh, and then, of course, there's other examples. The marijuana crackdown. There's no pushback from the Democrats. The, you know, you have Jeff Sessions doing a marijuana crackdown right now. You have the Supreme Court. The idea was, oh my God, if Trump wins, well then just have the Democrats block a vote on this Republican Supreme Court pick until the next Democratic president. Because that's what the Republicans did. They said, we're not going to allow a vote on Merrick Garland no matter what. We're just going to block him for like over a year. Fuck off. We don't care. Fuck you. Fuck you. So the argument was, well, let's, if Trump wins, hey, it might be a good thing because then the Democrats will be able to do jujitsu and do the same kind of obstinate reaction and say, we're going to uh, not allow, um, you know, uh, whoever they pick, it turned out to be Neil Gorsuch, on the course, on the court. Well, they didn't. They folded immediately. As I would have, I predicted. I knew they were going to fold because the Democrats suck. They suck. So, the point, you know, that I would argue is, it's not better if the GOP won. Of course it's not. It was a lose-lose, WikiLeaks, Assange, whoever said that. And that's a, that's a naive way of looking at it. Like, oh, maybe it'll be good if Trump wins. No. It's shitty if Trump wins. It's shitty if Hillary wins. And if you go rigidly and strictly by the issues, it would just be slightly less shitty if Hillary had won. The only difference, as far as I could tell, were those very narrow areas. Like Hillary Clinton, obviously, she wouldn't have been as shitty with the Supreme Court because she said, I would have kept Merrick Garland up, who's a shitty centrist, but that's better than a far-right judge like Gorsuch. You know, uh, Hillary would not have pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement. So, slightly better than Trump on issues of climate change. So, there were a few differences where Hillary was better, but my main argument here is it was a lose-lose either way, and the idea that, and I'm going to quote it again, that we believe it would be much better for the, for the GOP to win, that's naive. If, if you believe in a left-wing agenda, that's naive, man. It was a lose-lose. And, um, it did not come to fruition that, oh, if Trump gets elected, everything he wants to do will be blocked and Democratic Socialists immediately will take over the party. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. We tried. <laughs> we fucking tried, goddammit. We really did. But, um, at the end of the day, they're still the overwhelming dominant force in the party, the neoliberals, which is why Trump is getting away with so much of the shit that he wants to do. So I would just, uh, I would just say stay away from this kind of faulty reasoning because it is faulty at the end of the day. It is faulty. I see the theory he's laying out, but it just turns out to not be empirically correct. By the same token, I don't think the opposite is true either. That's why I said he's half right, half wrong. Because the opposite argument is no, if Hillary wins, then everything will, then it'll be good. It wasn't good. <laughs> if Hillary won, it wouldn't have been good either. It just would have been slightly less shitty. But in either situation, you still have neoliberals being the dominant strain in the Democratic uh, establishment, and you still have the far-right neoconservatives uh, being the dominant strain in the Republican Party. And uh, listen, some people argued, hey, w WikiLeaks released the DNC emails. I defend them to this day doing that, and I will continue to defend them. For WikiLeaks released the DNC emails, and I don't even care how they got them. I don't even care if they got them from Russia. Fine. Don't give a shit. I need it. It's good that we saw that a primary was rigged. More truth is always a fucking good thing, okay? So, it's a good thing that we saw the leaks of the DNC emails. Some people argue, yeah, but they should have released the RNC emails too. And to that I say, well, maybe they didn't have access to them. 
Um, but now I get the sense that even if they did have access to the RNC emails, they wouldn't have released them. And maybe I'm wrong. And I hope I'm wrong, because I, I like WikiLeaks. Um, but the fact that they're... Whoever was running the account, Assange or not, was saying, we believe it would be much better for the GOP to win. Well, that leads me to believe that, yeah, they would probably only release the damaging information on Hillary. Because they're saying, hey, I, we believe it's better for the GOP to win. So if you believe it's better for the GOP to win, why would you leak something that would hurt their chances? Right? Now, again, maybe I'm wrong, and I hope to God I'm wrong, man. I really do. Because in my mind... If you believe in leaks in a principled way, you should believe in them in the case of the fuckery going on behind the scenes at the DNC and the definite fuckery that is potentially going on behind the scenes at the RNC. I guarantee you there's a whole bunch of fucked up shit going on behind the scenes at the RNC. So I would just hope that WikiLeaks would be able to put aside their own personal politics and do the across the board leaks, um, you know, on DNC fuckery, but also on RNC fuckery. And they can put that aside. The fact that in their estimation, quote, we believe it would be much better for the GOP to win. So, that's my take on it, and I hope moving forward that when we get leaks, the leaks are going to be in the interest of the American people, regardless of the partisan politics of it. Because I don't care about the partisan politics of it. I care about exposing wrongdoing across the board. That's my concern.